Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Matt. And we are from Bakersfield, California, and we recently quit our jobs and are now traveling the Americas in our big red van, Clifford. So we converted Clifford in about six weeks, so we definitely did it in a hurry. We tried to capture as much footage as we can, but if you have any questions about how we built something or how we did some piece of the van, please leave us some comments or questions. We'd love to make more videos detailing exactly how we did it. Oh, electrical. Why do we have four batteries? We got four batteries because I was test running our Norcold fridge. We have a Norcold 751 in the garage and it looked like it was pulling like 60-ish amp hours in a 24 hour period. I was probably like 80 in the garage. Um, 80 so degrees. 80 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah. So we wanted to be able to boondock for a little longer um, without having to charge the batteries, running the van, or if we have like really cloudy days and just barely any solar. So I bought an extra two batteries, which will give us like, we're at 400 amp hours total. So about 200 amp hours of usable capacity if you only discharge like 50%, which is what they recommend to make your batteries last longer. Um, and everything ended up fitting really well, so I'm happy with it. Um, it's a little bit extra weight, but it shouldn't be any too significant. So, I'm working on running wiring to at least like approximate locations for everything. Um, for the max fan, we're going to light switch at the entrance when we come in. And then all the lights, we'll have three LED lights, like um, recessed can lights in the ceiling. It's over there. Um, we'll have a chandelier over LED here. light kind of over the table. I haven't run the wiring for that. Wiring for the microwave, bridge, 12 volt sink pump. And then I need to run some outlets um, for us to run appliances, 120 volt outlets for kitchen appliances. So, yeah, that should be about what it. are these contraptions in here? So, I'm gonna have a piece of plywood that sits on top of this um, that kind of covers everything. So it'll be nice and neat, but I have a 200 amp breaker, which is gonna be the main breaker, everything from the batteries. We'll run through this breaker first. And then from here, we'll have a wire that jumps underneath to the converter, which is located under this bench. Um, and to this distribution block, this takes uh, like normal automotive fuses and I can feed 10 circuits off of there. So this is where all the power will get fed to all the different circuits. And then this is a negative bus bar. So all the negatives will tie back to this on their way back. Uh, to the battery rank and that just makes it kind of clean for wiring everything has a place to go you don't have a ton of wires stacked on top of each other um, on like one terminal and if I have to troubleshoot anything it's pretty easy to know what's what and address just one circuit at a time so there'll be some other stuff in here we're gonna do a, a tie back from the, the van alternator to charge the batteries when we're driving uh, I haven't wired any of that stuff yet but that's where it is right now. That's where we're at right now. Yeah, we gotta build something to hold the MPT, PT charger, and our, um, our like trimetric, our battery monitoring system. What's an so, MPT charger? It's um, our solar charger. Oh. Okay. Solar charger controller. So, some of that stuff still needs to be wired. Obviously, we don't have any panels on the roof yet. We'll probably end up putting a hole in the ceiling over here, kind of over this cabinet, where we'll run the solar wires in and out of the van. Down to the bats. Yep. Keep you updated as it progresses. So I wanted to film a short video about our electrical system. I know this was a part of the build that was, uh, raised a lot of questions for me because even though I know a little bit about electricity, I'd never, you know, wired anything, um, especially anything as serious as this. So what we ended up with was four six volt golf cart batteries. They're each 210 amp hours. Um, we started off with just two, or planning for just two, but after doing some testing in the garage, running the fridge, we decided we wanted a little bit more capacity. So 
each one is wired in series parallel. So we have two six volt batteries wired together here, making basically one 12 volt battery. Same thing here. And then jumpers coming across, wiring those batteries in parallel, which adds the amp hours together. So that's how we get from 210 to 420. Um, all the positive wires run through this 200 amp breaker. So this is where I can disconnect the batteries from the electrical system for the whole van um, right here. So I push that, everything goes off. Um, I turn everything on all at once. If I need to work on anything, I can get there. The inverter pulls off right here. So that's all the cable I use for the batteries and the inverter is one out cable because we have a 2000 watt inverter which could pull up to, you know, almost 150 amps of 12 volt, which is a lot. So we use pretty heavy duty cable. This stuff's pretty hard to work with. It's really stiff, um, but you can kind of pre-bend it and it, it stays where it's supposed to. So the inverter comes off here. There's a four gauge cable that comes over here. This is the distribution block for all the 12 volt stuff. Um, so everything's fused with like regular automotive fuses. We have the fridge, um, the max fan and chandelier. Uh, this is the water pump. Lights over the, um, the countertop. Yeah. yeah, lights over the countertop. And then this is the overhead lights and the front max fan. And then each of these has a number on it. You can see these are lit up. So this thing's really great. It'll tell you if you have a blown fuse. I just have these pulled out right now. So we're not running the fridge and the water pump all the time. Um, so yeah, everything comes in there. And then similar thing on the negative side. So everything comes through this uh, bus bar. And then what I did is I labeled each one of these one through 10. And that way it corresponds to the same number over here on the uh, distribution block. And that way if I have any issues or need to troubleshoot anything, I know which ground is which. So that way I didn't really label any of those. They're just matched up with um, the positive side, which has the labels. Um, I'll show you this stuff back here. So this is, sorry, back up. so this four gauge cable comes from the front of the van. I ran this behind the cabinets, um, kind of under the floor mat by the driver's side and through the firewall, it's connected to the battery of the van. Um, and we're gonna use this as a charging point from the van alternator. Um, so we can charge the batteries when the van's running if we don't have you know good solar or it's cloudy for a while So the way I set that up that comes through a 100 amp breaker so I can disconnect that at any time if I need to This is a relay So it gets 12 volts here and opens and this Orange wire also runs to the front of the van um, And is just tied in with a fuse under the driver's seat that gets 12 volts when the the van's put in start. So basically it disconnects the battery when the van's not running and connects it when we start the van. The other thing I added was this, which is a 12 volt delay relay. Um, and this probably wasn't necessary, but I added it because I wanted the van to have a chance to start and recharge its own battery before we tied it into our batteries, especially if these were low. If you connected it right when the van tries to start, um, you could suck down the van battery a lot and have trouble starting or some of the issues. So um, this is actually the cable that runs to the front of the van. You can see it there. Comes in here. This thing gets that voltage and then waits like two minutes and then sends voltage through this wire to the relay um, that I just showed you right here. And that'll open that. Um, so that's kind of the van charging setup. Um, to make that work, you have to ground the entire system to the chassis of the van also. So I used one of the plus nuts here. I don't know how well this is gonna work. I haven't tested it yet. Um, if this doesn't work, I'll end up making a tap in the actual metal of the van here. But when I checked voltage across this, I had, it seemed like I had a pretty good ground. I don't know how much current it's gonna carry well, but I'm gonna test that out. So I have the whole system grounded to the chassis of the van right here um yeah so i'll show you the front it's kind of it's not the ideal location for our like control panel because it's kind of low but i'll show you um i was just going to turn something on real quick so this is what we're using for like our trimetric 
I got this off of eBay. Um, hard to say exactly how accurate this thing is, but I think it's better than nothing. Um, basically, this is going to monitor the amp hours that we use for the batteries. Um, so yeah, it'll tell you the voltage, how many amps you're currently using, whether it's going in or out, your percentage of battery, and then some other stuff as far as how long it's been on, watt hours, some of that stuff. So it's very similar to the Trimetric, but I got it pretty cheap. It uses a hall sensor instead of a shunt, which is, I can show you that right here. Um, that's this little guy. So if you looked at these, a shunt um, is like a fixed, basically you tie one side of the neutral on one side and one side into the other of like a bar like this. And this bar is a fixed resistance. So it measures the voltage drop from here to here and tells you, okay, that's how many amps you're using. This hall sensor uses magnets, like magnetism. Um, when current flows through a wire, it creates a magnetic field. This measures that magnetic field and calculates how much amperage you're using. So I like that setup is a little bit less wiring because it just goes around one of the cables instead of making another connection with the one out cable. Um, so we have this here to kind of keep tabs on the battery. Our solar charger uh, is an MPPT charger. It is kind of under here. I just cut out a window so you can see the display for that. We don't have our panels hooked up yet, um, but when I do all that information will come in here. You'll also be able to see it on the controller for the uh, amount of current it's putting into the system. This is a 12 volt plug for our phones and stuff like that. And then we have our um, carbon monoxide and propane detector um, down there. Carbon monoxide is heavier than air, so you want it towards the floor. So yeah, that kind of sums up most of the stuff over here. Um, the inverter, obviously 120, I just wired an extension plug. Um, head on there. Just like that. That was extremely hard to wire. Um, kind of janky, but it works. So we're gonna run with it for now. Um, one thing I would definitely recommend is we used the 12-2 12 12 Romax, which I read on another blog of somebody using, said it was great. I would disagree. I would not use this Romax cable if I were you. Um, basically, because it's solid core, and most of your connections here are gonna be like crimp fittings, and crimp fittings do not go well with solid core wire just because they don't hold as well. They're really hard to get tight. You gotta crimp them really, really hard. Um, also, this wire is really stiff. It's very hard to like move and navigate because it's solid core, it doesn't bend as well. It's not as flexible as a wire that has strands. Also, since we use this for all of our 12 volt wiring, um, it has an extra wire in there. It has the ground wire. So it's actually got three solid core 12 gauge wires in there instead of uh, just two. So it just makes it a little bit harder to work with and bend. So I would definitely use um, a two conductor 12 gauge stranded cable. Like um, I saw some for landscaping, like landscape lighting and stuff like that. And I think you'd be much happier with that. Um, but yeah, the 120 leaves there. It comes up into a switch box that we have right here. That's where we're gonna get power for our, um, all of our kitchen appliances, computer chargers, anything like that. We just did one outlet because we figured we don't really need to be running a lot of stuff all at once. It comes out of there and goes up to the microwave. And on the microwave, I just wired the female side of the extension cord plug um, that that can plug into. Um, I put an inverter remote here because the inverter pulls power when it's just on. Um, and it's underneath the seat, so I didn't want to have to like move the cushions and get to it to turn it on and off anytime we wanted to use this. So we can turn it on right there and turn it off right here if we want to use this outlet or use a microwave. Um, this switch is a regular household switch, um, but I wired it to 12 volt lights up underneath the cabinets. And the only other piece of wiring we really have is the dimmer switch we put over here. Um, and that's for our main lights. We did have to buy a special dimmer switch. We couldn't, I tried to wire up like a regular household 120 volt dimmer switch, but I was unable to get it to work. So we bought that off of like an LED site. I forget the name of it. LED outlet. Yeah, something like that. I'll put the link in the blog. In the description, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it works really good. 
Um, it was expensive. It was like twenty dollars, but there are some other ones. So yeah, see we can we can dim, and that's really nice because these things are really bright. We use like the six watt recess lights, mm -hmm. and yeah, they're really bright when they're on full blast. So we're definitely not gonna want to do that all the time. And the chandelier turn on with this remote here yeah so we made that out of like some string lights I guess like string LEDs um, it came with our remote and everything else and then Allie built that little this is, copper not, chandelier yeah we're not finished with this yet we might change it a little bit but yeah it's kind of limping on one side <laughs> but yeah we can throw some ravers in here ragers Raves have some, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the words. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's basically what we got going on from our electrical setup. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Feel free to let us know. I know I had a lot of questions and did a lot of research about this specifically just because uh, it's important. It's also, you know, a little bit higher risk if you mess it up. So. True that. Yeah. So on to putting the solar panels on the roof now. Yeah, that'll be another adventure. I'll try to uh, document some of that. Yeah. So. so you can hear a van running. I'm testing the charge back from the alternator. Um, it works perfect. You see a little green light on there is on. It means this thing hit its time. It waited about two minutes, maybe a little longer so I might adjust the time on there it's pretty easy it has a little potentiometer you just kind of spin it to adjust the time um, initially we hit like 40 amps uh, probably peaked to like 50 right when it connected dropped to 40 pretty quickly and now we're back we're down to like 20 and it's still dropping but the batteries are pretty charged um, and yeah it's just kind of holding 14.2 volts on it which is a good absorption charge rate so it'll kind of drop current as the batteries uh, get more and more charged. They don't want as much juice. So it seems to be working good. I'm curious how it will work when the batteries are really low and I connect to it. Um, just because I did hear a little bit of a, not necessarily a stumble, but just that it loaded the engine. Um, when we started pulling that current right when it connected. So I'm thinking that current might be a lot higher if the starting voltage of the batteries is like 12, one instead of, you know, 12, six, 12, seven. So more to come on that, but so far everything's working. Touched all the connections, nothing's getting warm or anything. So we're handling 20 amps, uh, no problem. <laughs> If you like this video, what should you do? Subscribe! And subscribe! <laughs> Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you have any questions, if you're like, what the heck? What, what did they do? They skipped over this part. Hit us up. We'll make sure to respond. <laughs> oh, Amber, you said you're a good girl.